Um, so the episode starts off with Logan reacting to how he's on the bottom and how he's like hurt by Rebecca the most, and he debates on whether he's gonna scramble or like just lie down and accept his fate. And honestly, why are you here if you're even considering this? Don't lie down, accept your fate. You've got to do something by it. You're on the bottom. You've got to get out of there. What do you think? <laughs> I definitely think he chose to scramble. The amount of confessionals he got this episode, it showed that he was really trying to get back in the good grace of people. He still wanted to work with Rebecca, which kind of shows that Rebecca's in a really good spot, for one. But then, you know, Logan's, he's trying. So it's, it's good to see that he's still trying. It, he didn't just give up. I agree with that. It's like, you can see he's trying, he does care about the game, but, you know, it's gonna come close to it because if you're on the bottom and it's like it's kind of a precarious point there could be a tribe swap there might not be a tribe swap you know you can never really tell when you're like when in you're doing spot. enough yeah you're doing enough you're in a good spot yeah so Seb kind of feels like he's becoming a threat and I completely agree he needs to manage his threat level like I get it, it's this early on you want to do something, but maybe just pipe down a little bit, keep your opinions mm -hmm. lower down, kind of like more predominant in the game. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Everyone yeah. wants to build their resume so early this season, it seems like. Everyone wants to do anything to put their name on the map. And I feel like a lot of people, are, it's going to bite them for doing it. I think the mentality of virtual simply being on virtual survivor has gotten to them. And I think they, I think they just want to be known as the big player in virtual survival. Mm -hmm. But the real strategy you got to do early into the game is lay low, mm -hmm. make it to merge, and then you start making your big moves. I agree with that. It's like you see all these players doing big things now. Like you can mm -hmm. see personalities forming, and you wonder like how long are they actually going to last? Because if everyone knows you're a threat, then you kind of screwed. There's only so much you can do before you're next on the list to go it's yeah so we heard a bit from goody this episode he's kind of unsure if hw is actually coming from him and he thinks that seb lied to him and i think it was a good part on seb's like behalf lying but the fact that goody's kind of unsure about the lies like mm -hmm. i'm happy for goody for like you know sussing things because at least he's questioning he's his head's in the game he's trying to work so. he's definitely thinking is what's good he's uh always questioning everything because in the game you can't always be sure so even if you're so sure like even with me and you i still questioned you and we were like that we were like this yeah, yeah. i think goody's a more i think with all due respect i think goody's a bit of a smarter griffin i think he's a more aware griffin um i feel like I feel like he can, I feel like he recognizes things easier from a host standpoint. I think he kind of, I think he's the only, one of the only players who actually is doing the sit back and watch people destroy each other strategy mm -hmm. that I mentioned. I think he's the only person that is actually trying to do that. Mm -hmm. I think it's working. I don't, I don't see him as a threat right now. And I don't think anyone really does. I do see him going far with the way he's playing currently. Yeah. It's just a question of how long is he going to sit back for and will he actually kick things into gear or is he going to fizzle out or get taken out? But So Raul's still happy to be here, but he recognizes, he's, yeah, he recognizes that he's a target. And I think that's a good thing that he's recognizing he's a target because you can never rest on your laurels. But at the same time, he's got to kind of, I feel like, Yes, he's recognizing the target, but he's got to build more of a game sense of how he's mm. coming across to everyone. I so. think the two votes woke him up a little bit. He recognizes now, okay, yes, it's two votes, but two votes on down down the line, that's going to mean something. That's good. That could easily vote you out with two votes. If someone plays an idol, if you're down to five, two votes could easily kick you out of the game. So I'm glad that he notices that just because it's two doesn't mean that's not going to you know affect him. Yeah, I agree with that. Then the whole Apple gang thing. Gosh, where can I begin? It looks like it's going to self-implode. Like, Jonah and James have got drama. Logan's upset. Like, Logan wants to work with Rebecca and Se not Seb. Like, 
Mm-hmm. There's so many things going on. I don't think Seb likes Jonah. Like, there's all these different things, and it's I don't just... even know if Aiden's even like a part of that gang. <laughs> first, that's not. Yeah. Yeah, it's just they just... all formed so fast. I don't think either of them really got the chance to think. Do I really want to work with these people? Are these the people I want to work with? They just formed so fast because the game started so quickly for them. So now they're starting to realize: Is this actually where I want to be with these people, or do I want to be with a different group now? Exactly. That's very true. Yeah. Okay. So meanwhile, like on the other tribe, Tyler's made this fake idol and he sent it to Jesse, and Jesse believes it's real. So, I feel like Jesse's being way too gullible at this point. Mm-hmm. Surely he should be at least like, like he should be questioning Tyler, like, why are you giving this to me? Like, why am I getting it? Yes, we're allies, but surely if you've got this mm-hmm. advantage, you should be keeping it. Less. To, oh, maybe I'm to give Jesse credit, though, it, it's only episode three. It's kind of crazy for someone to instantly come up with a fake idol because when you watch real Survivor, no one makes a fake idol this early. It's always de- like in final six, final yeah. seven. This is literally, they're, what, at 17, 18 people right now? Why would someone be making a fake idol and giving it to someone? What, what's the point? It's also a very creative way of how he did it as well. He mm-hmm. made a fake account, um, sent it to the person that he wanted. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that, I mean, honestly, I've heard you can like it or you can hate it. I like it. I think it's really masterful from Tyler. I don't think it's the smartest thing to do at the start of the game, but I like the way he did it. Yeah, like I completely I, yeah. respect it. I think for him, it's going to come down to, will Jesse tell everyone what Tyler just did? Because that could easily lose a lot of trust with people if Tyler just did that. Because now if he is give, if he has an idol and he tries giving someone, is someone going to actually believe it? True. And so Scott actually found his tribe's idol and he told Hudson. So I feel like this could work two ways for him. Either people kind of realize that him and Hudson are a duo and... I feel like Hudson would get targeted because he's the less social one and people like Scott more. And it's also Hudson could use that information to his own advantage. So I think mm-hmm. Scott's got to be really careful about how he manages Hudson within his own social game because like everything could easily turn on him because currently he's kind of looking like the kingpin, but things could easily change. Mm-hmm. And telling Hudson about the idol, yes, they're like partners in crime, but you know, they could turn on each other. So, I, think, I, think, I think they're one of the closest like duos in this game so far. Mm-hmm. I think it's very. It, I, I'm iffy on him doing that. Uh, I don't think I would have told Hudson, but I think there was a reason he did it. It brought them closer. And then the only issue I can see is if Hudson does get targeted, where's Hudson going to go? He's going to go straight to Scott. I need the idol. And then Scott's going to have to show his cards. Is he willing to give the idol up or not? It's very true. Meanwhile, back on Kabe, um, Rebecca's talking about her alliance and her position in the game. I feel like she's playing really well at the minute. Mm-hmm. Um, she's got connections to both tribes. Everyone seems to want to work with her, like on her tribe at least. And like, I feel like the only threatening aspect to her game from what we've kind of seen is like the fact she's Marco's sister. And mm-hmm. that's like, you know, she, we haven't got her own person's threat as such we've mm-hmm. literally got a family relation that makes her a threat but she's managing it reasonably well people aren't just saying all oh, it's better out because she's Marco's sister so you know I feel like if she can keep this under control and she's got all these social connections she's going far because no one seems to want to vote her out let's not forget she has an idol she literally has an idol too exactly. yeah. she's in a great position on her side she's in an, uh, the majority She's tied with people in the minority that don't want her out either, that want to work with her. She's in the best spot of Kabe. Exactly. Then Aiden, he forms the other guys with um, James, Logan, and Goody. And I like it because, you know, that gives James a lot of power, whether he recognizes it or not, which he does. Mm -hmm. Like, they could easily say James doesn't like someone like Raul, Jonah, or whatever. He can flip to the guys, vote them out, and flip back because he'll still have the advantage. He can play the middle perfectly. And even though everyone me, wants to work with Rebecca... One, that's my strategy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Even though everyone wants to work with Rebecca, James ultimately has the power because he mm-hmm. can choose which side he wants to work with. Currently, there's eight people on their side. If he takes out one from his side, it's going to be... 3-3 three, three, pretty much. He's going to be able to flip back and forth. He could go to this side, vote one person out, go to this side, vote person up. It's perfect. 
I just hope he knows that uh, if he does do this and then they tribe swap and he gets put with the people he just blindsided, I think that's the one thing holding him back from wanting to do it because he is aware that tribe swaps are pretty recent are coming. Well, possible, yeah, exactly. So it's kind of, it's it's a risk, but do the pros outweigh the cons, or mm -hmm. does he keep the standing with both sides and try and you know play the middle in a way that he's not betraying everybody mm -hmm. and such? The so, best thing for yeah. him is if they win the next challenge, so then he doesn't have to make the decision. Exactly. So. We get to the challenge, Plank Challenge, um, three representatives from each tribe. I feel like that was a, a better way to do the Plank Challenge, as not everybody is good at planking. <laughs> but I feel like, Me and Eve are obviously yeah. the best plankers of season one. Obviously. But so choosing the best people. It's a innovation yeah. from season one, I think. I think, not a lot, I think not a lot of people would expect a Plank Challenge to be in the, I, def I like the way it was put in as a team one. I, I think I preference that to a solos plank. I agree. Yeah. Oh, I've got, I've got to was, say first on Sied's form. Yeah. Sied's form in that plank challenge, top notch. Like, solid plank throughout, didn't cheat, nothing. He's a fit kid. That guy does track and field. I've never seen a more, like, in shape Dutchman in my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God. Awesome. It's true. He's freaking athletic. He's he, he definitely really impressive. held it up for his tribe. Uh, what he went like an extra, almost double what every, um, everyone Marco's else did after everyone else dropped out. He doubled Marco's time, and you could clearly tell his he was not on his knees. Jonah, eh? It kind of looked like he was on his knees. Okay, yeah. I wanted to talk about that from a host standpoint. You could not <laughs> see Jonah's knees from behind. He mm -hmm. says. Um, which I don't blame him, but a lot of people have said all you could see was arms and him grunting. His you face could grunting. see, um, yeah, it looked, I could it see kind of looked the like arms he was like putting that. his face in the way and then he was like yeah. showing like uh, anguish on his face to make it look like it. I couldn't really tell, but props to him for winning. He won it first try. Yeah, he still won it, and that's a good job. He caught, he clutched mm -hmm. the 1v2. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, also, there was like a bit of a tight like space that he was planking in. Like there was his bed, there was like a shelf or something. He was yeah. In between that, so he could very easily just use his shoulders or something as leverage. Doesn't matter. Still won. Um, can't. Really in the end, the, he won. You, there wasn't a redo. He won. That, that was he didn't get caught. Yeah. Really simple. He didn't get Marco, caught. Marco so flat play. out said, "It cheat when people aren't looking." And if he if he did it, he did it successfully. He got a first try. Yeah. So, and the other, tribe to... obviously, the other tribe is going to say he cheated because they just lost. Yeah. They didn't actually, no, they didn't actually, like, acknowledge cheating, really. They didn't? Just afterwards. They didn't really hear any accusations at all. No, just afterwards that we go. But, but yeah. I mean, other than, like, Sierra's confessional of, like, maybe Jonah cheated, maybe he didn't. It doesn't yeah. matter. Heading to tribal. Yeah. He was really, they were really respectful about it. I agree. I, I think that was I don't good. see it. I think Sied actually put himself in a good spot by showing how good he is in strength-based challenges where he did admit there probably won't be a lot of physical challenges, but if he's in a tribe and there's a physical challenge, who are they going to want to throw in? He's, he's going to be the one thrown in. So it's a good spot for him because now he's not really going to be targeted for that aspect, at least until it's singles. Exactly. When it hits merge, he's going to be That's when people are going to start at. thinking about him more, I feel. Yeah, I feel like he'll be able to make it to merge comfortably, but once it hits merge, they've seen him. He's physical, he's good at these challenges, he's good at mental, piece. he's good at puzzles, stuff. Yeah, people are going to see this immunity threat and they're going to be like... Yeah, let's, keep, let's get him out now. Let's get him out, yeah, exactly. So, after the challenge, Sia, um, Sia believes the votes will be um, between Jesse and Michaela. So, you know... Michaela, we've not really heard much from at all. Jesse, we've started hearing a lot more this episode with the whole fake idol. But I wanted to know what you guys kind of thought about, you know, the fake idol and Michaela and stuff. You can go first, Michael. I mean, obviously, he bought it. I mean, he's like, in his confessionals, he's like, I have an idol. Wow. I mean, I, and he tells it, like, he tells it how he got it. He got it off Instagram, like, Survivor Geek, and it, like, the Survivor Geek thing and everything. I think he thinks. It's a genuine, real idol, which, I mean, that just shows how good of a move. That's why I think it was a good move by Tyler. If it, if he like screwed it up, then he would have like Tyler. 
I mean, if Jesse found out it was Tyler, then Tyler would have been absolutely screwed. Like, he would have probably went home. But the fact that Jesse actually believes it, I think mm-hmm. Tyler just asserted himself in a really good position for that. Yeah. The only thing I'd have to say for that move is the sad thing is he got a lot of confessionals, but were they really for him? It, it felt like it was more uh, him displaying how Tyler's move worked. It didn't feel like, oh, this confessional is for Jesse. It's confessionals for Tyler's move. It yeah. felt like. Yeah. yeah. So I, didn't feel like I, I didn't feel like he was building himself up. I felt like he was actually, it was kind of tarnishing what, uh, what it could have been if it wasn't Ivy. So now it feels like uh, now Jesse's going to be perceived as, as Eve said, Gullum. Yeah. Then there's Michaela. On camera, it seems like she's done very little. We don't really see that many connections. She believes she's got two votes with her, but is two really enough? Like, no. So- their, first, their first tribal, she got two people with her. That is not good. I, she should have definitely scrambled immediately if she only thought she had two people voting with her. Exactly. Like, I think she mentioned something about feeling she didn't really recognize the fact that maybe she is on the chopping block. And I feel like that is the first mistake you can make is believing you're safe. When mm-hmm. it's the first time you feel safe, the second safe, you're, you're comfortable the is the second you're about to go home. And you better have your bags with you every single time. Agreed. Didn't think she was, she realized her back was against the wall, and then I don't I don't feel like she ever got into the game enough. I feel like everyone else was like their game faces on. It felt like she was more glazed over. She was just, hey, I'm here. Yeah. I, I don't think I don't think she got the chance to actually uh, realize I'm in the game. I need to fight. It was more of I'm in Survivor. Yeah. Is how she, I think that's all that's all she got to. That's, that's all she got to. She didn't get into game mode yet. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like. If that was maybe the first episode, I feel like that would be okay. But the fact it's now, what, the third episode, you've had yes. bare minimum, probably like a week, bare minimum, to talk to these people, you should realize, oh wait, I'm in the game, I need to do something about my situation. Am I actually in good child? Do I know what's going mm-hmm. on? No, I don't. Why don't I, like, do something to better my position? Like, I don't know if she tried, I don't know what connection she had, we literally heard nothing. So we don't really see her perspective, but from the way the edit's portrayed, it looks like, you know, she was just She didn't try. She just laid over and died. Like what uh, Logan said in the beginning, you either do, you either fight and scramble or you lay over and die. And I felt like Michaela was more of the lay over and die. Agreed. So Devin, he had an interesting episode, you know, um, it was part of the fake idol, like kind of storyline-ish. Um, he's in the majority and he's like he's on good terms with Nick and also Scott Mm -hmm. so I feel like that could play well for him but he's not he's kind of playing second fiddle to Hudson without realizing so Mm -hmm. that could turn out badly but time will tell I think there was there was a connection with Michaela and Devin that we didn't see because there's got to be a reason Michaela decided Devin should have this advantage and on her outing, when she like all the votes were being read, she said she wants Devin, Scott, or Rebecca. So there, there was a connection there that we just didn't get to see. Exactly. So it makes me feel like Devin, Devin knows what he's doing. He's a good social player because if he, even if he's got connections to Michaela, Michaela's going. He probably mm-hmm. knows Michaela's going, but he's still got connections. He's still made it so she's given him the advantage. He's obviously doing something behind the scenes. I feel like that's going to play out more over the next like couple of episodes. We might see some more within actual tribals. And also, Nick gave his vote to Devon. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of another... That's another point. connection Devon has. Yeah. Another way to prove he's playing well socially. Mm-hmm. So then- it looks like Devon will definitely be a good social player moving forward. He's aligned well. He He's kind of reminding me of how Rebecca's going on the other tribe. Like, he's aligned well, but no one's targeting uh, him and no one's targeting her, but they're all aligned really well. And now he has an advantage, which we don't know what it is. It could be the legacy. It could be another vote steal. It could be a vote, an extra vote, or it could even be the tribe swap advantage. I think opinion. Um, I think Devin is actually in one of the better, like probably the best position on Drummer right now, only because um, Scott and Hudson, I think, are the ringleaders of mm-hmm. that Dromu alliance. 
Devin, I think, is second in command with people like um, Nick or Andy. Um, like these low tier players, Scott and Hudson. I mean, they don't know about the idol, but um, if they do, then Scott and Hudson are kind of screwed. So that we got, they got to play that idol perfectly, like not just not just at tribal council, but they got to like not tell anyone. People will have to find out because I I worry for Nick more on this tribe just because we haven't seen him at all this whole episode. He was pretty much completely nerfed. He wasn't there. Uh, I worry that if they ever get into a, like a bad spot, say they get to merge and they're out in numbers and the majority wants to pick off someone that they don't think has an idol, Nick is probably going to be that person because he's just not as so it doesn't look like he's as sociable as uh, other people on his tribe. But at the same time, like he must be doing something behind the scenes because he's in good with Scott, he's in good with Hudson, he's in good with Devon, he's in good with Andy, like he's in good with the majority of the people of his <laughs> tribe. He didn't go to tribal. No one even considered voting him out. Like, he was quite commanding in the first challenge. Like, but then he's kind of taken a step back, and I feel like that's the right thing to do because he's proven he is a presence in the tribe without overdoing it and people thinking, "Oh wait, this guy's you know, he's kind of good. Why don't we get him out early?" Yeah, they're just thinking, yeah, it's just yeah he's blending in right now and i think that's really good for his game i think that that is definitely smart uh he showed himself to be you know a known figure but then he let everyone else kind of move forward a little bit to like so then if there is a big target and they want to take out a big target it's not going to be him that's getting that shot player of the episode eddie do you want to start in my opinion i think Devin's the player of the episode uh for me uh not many not a whole lot of confessionals but still vividly being shown uh he got the vote from nick so he knows nick and him are good he says he's good with scout and scout has an idol and then he just got the advantage from michaela even though he just voted michaela out so there's definitely he's making good ties and then for maybe the other side i'd probably say rebecca's in the best position but i do respect aiden for making that alliance trying to save himself i think that was smart on his aspect so for me um personally it's tyler because yeah he's got the whole fake idol thing he's got jesse to play this fake idol like it seemed to be like jesse was in his pocket like he's got this global player and he's not in the minority he's working with like a group of people he kind of knows what he's doing but like even the way he got the idol that was really smart yes you didn't get like michaela's sympathy or whatever but Maybe he just didn't build bond with her. So I feel like from a gameplay perspective and a social perspective, he's definitely performed this episode. Oh, for me? Okay. Um, yeah. So I actually was going to say Tyler, but I think I'll differentiate it because Eve already said it. Uh, I think Scott uh, was definitely one of the bigger players of the episode. I think he would probably be my top player. Um, got an idol. Um, and he's at the top of the majority line. It's pretty simple. I mean, you know, what more power can you get? The only thing, as I said, um, just don't make, just don't get the idol leaked to anyone. It, let, let's see how loyal Hudson is to you, I guess. Um, and then, uh, other than that, like he's playing a really good game so far. He's in a really good position. Agreed. I, I completely agree with both of you. Yeah. 